I'm a 36-year-old man, and my girlfriend is 34. I'll call her Jenny. She has a son who is 14 from a previous relationship. I'll call him George. Jenny and I get along well in basically all but one department, George. As bad as this is going to make me sound, I really don't like this kid. But Jenny's rose-tinted glasses for him might as well be painted with a coat of black at this point. Tell, I don't know. Uh, this kind of like mixed metaphors at this point. You, I don't think you can have rose-tinted glasses that are also painted black. It doesn't make any sense. She legitimately can't stop enabling his bad behavior, let alone recognize it for what it is. The friction has only gotten worse as she moved in with me two months ago because they could no longer afford to live alone. I have a basement gym I have poured over $7,000 into, and this is where I'm adding some creative license, after my divorce with my first wife. It has multiple types of high-end barbells, a power rack, and various other equipment. In past days, I was a competitive power lifter, and although I've scaled back a lot on that front, I still train very hard. When Jenny and George moved in, George started to use my home gym uninvited. I first warned him not to. Ah! Hey, without being too judgmental right now, why not just help him? You could have a shared interest with your stepson. You could have a hobby together. He could channel what you seem to think are, you know, malevolent urges into something a little bit more productive. But okay, because you spent the money on it, you're not going to let... It's literally just... It's just iron bars going up and down. Like, I, it's not that serious, man. You're not going to let your stepson use your home gym? Like, it's, it just seems insane to me. He's only 14? You just, like... You teach him how to do it, right? You could work... You could lift weights when you're 14? You ever see Kid Tarzan? It's like a seven-year-old kid who had like a 10-pack. He was on TLC all the time uh, <laughs> 15 years ago. Just, yeah, like, just teach him how to work out safely. And then it, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, he lied through his teeth and has consistently done it behind my back. Done what? Oh, worked out? Wow, this kid, he's crazy. I can tell because he leaves barbells loaded and equipment moved. Okay, I mean, that's, again, without being an asshole, that's why you should, like, work out with him. That's bad gym etiquette, is to leave the barbell loaded and, like, plates all strewn about. But people do that, like, in their 40s, if you've ever used a, a, an actual gym. Um, but you should supervise the kid and be like, hey, put your barbell back. You gotta, I, you, you gotta be a dad. Sorry. You're 37 years old. I then put a lock on the door, very mature, which George broke down with a hammer. I then reinforced the door and put a new lock on, which George could not penetrate. What the hell is going on, man? You reinforce the door? Jenny insists on having a spare key to the basement, and I recently learned she's been loaning it to George. She tried cleaning up after him, but I could tell, since he and she are home during the day as he takes lessons online, C plays Minecraft with the teacher muted, I can do nothing about it. Jenny won't return my key either. A couple of days ago, I got home from work and decided to hit the gym. Noticing the door open, I walked down the stairs only to find George in the middle of a bench press set. As I watched from the stairs, he went for one rep too many and got pinned. He was in no danger at any point because the barbell was low on his sternum, plus it was only like 80 pounds. After 30 seconds of panic mode... He finally got the bright idea to dump the weight, to which I gave him a slow clap. 30, you let this kid flounder for 30 seconds thinking he was gonna like crush his rib cage? I know it's only 80 pounds, but like, if this, this post has to be fake, because otherwise this guy should be minority reported. He should be in prison. I don't know if it's a crime to let your teenage stepson 
think that he's going to die from a bench press gone wrong. But like this guy seems like, I mean, I'm just going to say it. It seems like he drives a Dodge Ram, doesn't use his signal light, and then tries to uh, antagonize people on the road so that he can get into a road rage incident and, and have an opportunity to, to kill you. He seems like an insane person. They're coming to take him away right now. I don't know if you can hear the sirens. I started to tell him that's what happens when you work out alone. Okay! We're, we're almost on like this. We're, we're parallel lines destined to never meet. Why don't you just work out together, man? It's crazy. He then shrieked at me red-faced, probably because he um, it literally was in like mortal fear and, and scared. Um, then he insulted my strength, to which I responded, I'm not the one getting pinned under an 80-pound bench. He ran upstairs basically in tears and told Jenny what I had said. Jenny's also furious with me, and they're both giving me the silent treatment. She says I should have handled the situation better, but I say I kind of did when I installed a heavy-duty door and put a new lock on it. I'm going to be changing the lock tomorrow. Least insane... Divorced stepdad redditor? It, if this post is fake, and there's a chance that it is because it's on Am I the Asshole, I commend the creative writing because it's not so heavy-handed as to be like immediately dismissible as fake because I think we all know somebody in our lives that are, you know, like their masculinity is so fragile that they're like, no, I would never let my stepson work out in my gym. I paid for it. Why should he be able to work out? Why should a child that's part of my family be able to share some of my property when I'm the one who had to scan my Amex to get it? Like there's people, there's people like that. It's so obvious that like if this is real, all you have to do is start working out with your stepson and then you like, it's like a movie. You build like an awesome bond with one another. Your kid becomes young Hercules. He gets his own TLC, you know, special. He gets a million followers on Instagram. You know, it's like a path to, to success. But instead, what do you do? You're, it's like Rainbow Six Siege. You're putting up like a damn castle wall He's using a sledgehammer to break it down. And then you got like a, a frost bear trap just underneath it. The cat. I mean, and also like it's unconscionable to, to, to watch your stepson, even if he's not in physical risk, like of, of injury, to watch your stepson like think that he's go like just be scared and panicked for 30 seconds and not help. Like... You should help a stranger in that situation, obviously. Not helping your own stepson is truly madness. Like, that's, I, I mean, if, again, if this is real, I don't want to diagnose you, but because I'm not a psychiatrist, uh, I can't be disbarred for doing so. Seems a little like you might be like a sociopath or something. I don't know. You seem to only uh, consider how things affect you, which is particularly insane because you're 36 years old and this is literally just a child. Anyway, I want to I wanna take a look at some of the comments to feel, like, potentially validated on this. Okay, if you don't like her son, I would end the relationship, to be honest. Fairly reasonable take. But also, maybe, like, make an effort. Would also, that would probably be, like, my first thing, is maybe, like, make an effort. Not the asshole. Not, I, sorry, I got stunned for a second when I saw the guy because I'm, I'm like, she, they mean that you're the asshole, right? Like, I, I just can't believe that the second post that was awarded Reddit comment for this, I, I, I actually did not, I, it, it didn't hit the part of my brain that allowed me to interpret it. Not the asshole. I think you're the one viewing things through rose-tinted glasses. It's not just a matter of enabling him. Your girlfriend is using you. She's refusing to give you the spare key to your gym for the sole purpose of using it to violate your wish to not have your kid, that kid in there. Sorry, I said your kid. That's my mistake. That kid. This is beyond disrespectful. And now you have to change the lock again. You have, you have no choice but to change the lock one more time because she will not relinquish the key. Even better, she's punishing you with the silent treatment. 
Question. What happens when she demands the new key for the new lock you'll get? Will she keep giving you the silent treatment until you yield? This relationship isn't healthy. Edit. Thanks for the awards and stuff, kind strangers. Holy cow. This is like, and somebody said this in the, in the Discord yesterday, and it, it's completely true, or at least matches my preconceived notions of am I the asshole. There is a, a, a group of people out there, I don't even know, they might even be 51% plus of the population, that basically thinks uh, you have complete control over everything in your own house at all times, and not only do you have control, but you should exercise that control at all times. I can't imagine putting yourself in a position where you forbid your 14-year-old stepson from using your home gym. It just, why would you, like, if at any point he said something like, I'm worried he's going to get injured, then I would be like, okay, that makes sense. Maybe, like, try, I, I'm not saying the kid is not going to, like, go around him, but, like, maybe, like, hey, only work out when you're, like, with me. Uh, like supervised, you know, it, we're going to teach you safety rules and stuff. Like if he ever said like, it's dangerous, that's fine. But he didn't. <laughs> He's, it, it, instead, he mentioned the price tag for how much the gym cost him, which I think you can read between the lines and figure out why he doesn't want someone else to use it. You know, he spent $7,000 not only to have his own home gym, but also because um, it allows him to exclude other people from it, even though this seems like a no-brainer opportunity to like bond with your child. And it, or your, your stepson. I, anyway, I came... Just the idea... Look, the idea that like, well, if your, your girlfriend was unable to pay for her own living expenses and now she has the audacity to defy your orders in your own house, this is... And then she's... When she's mad at you for potentially having... Letting her son think that he's in mortal danger... She has the audacity to give you the silent treatment in your own house? Like, what? It's a scary thought, man, that, that this has 8,000 upvotes. Just my personal take. The narwhal do be baconing at midnight, though, for sure. I came here to say this. Her absolute lack of respect for you and your property shows how little she thinks of your relationship. I, I, I'm not saying you can't break gym equipment. But so much of it is literally like iron bars and solid like metal plates. What's he gonna do? Like this guy's powerlifting. He's got barbells, he's got plates. He has a squat rack, you know? It's not like it's a bowflex, he's gonna get the the iron peacock feathers like tangled or something i just don't understand they're so concerned about the the you might drop a plate on the ground or something like that what are you talking about i'm just like i'm not i nobody's concerned about the child hurting himself he was literally trapped under the bar everybody's concerned about the damage that he might do to the seven thousand dollar home gym that consists exclusively of like iron circles it's crazy man There's nothing here to salvage. I think you need to kick her out and find a new person to date because there's no repairing the lack of disregard for you. Holy cow. This is, this is madness. Here we go. Also, why do people not talk and find compromises? Like, okay, kid, you really want to use the gym? You can do it two times a week or however often with me. No sneaking, no safety issues. It could even be bonding issues with the kid. But no, one side entirely locks down a room instead of finding a way to find safe use. And the other side violently disrespects that. Just fully dysfunctional, the whole thing. Okay, a normal person that exists in the real world. 384 upvotes. How dare your girlfriend give you the silent treatment? 7.8 thousand upvotes and they gave it a... Someone spent real American dollars to give it a shooting star that shows up when you scroll past it. Like, I don't know why so many uh, relationships in Am I the Asshole end up being like nobody's gonna ever... Like, if you relinquish control over even the smallest issue of all time, you lose. 
Like, at, at one point, don't you just realize, like, this shit isn't fucking worth it? <laughs> and be like, okay, sorry. Let's move on. Like, let's, let's get back to our lives, that, like, the important parts, instead of getting sidetracked by, like, a, a stupid, like, pride, prideful argument for, like, a month. It's, this is, there's no way to live, man. And then, the most normal Redditors of all time. Hey, why wouldn't you just bond with him? Hey, why, he's a 14-year-old boy who wants to work out. You clearly like working out. Why wouldn't you just bond with him? Jenny's the worst, the worst. Jenny's are always the worst. So true. Most sane Redditor in the comments spotted. What the hell are you even talking about? Not the asshole. And it's a good idea for George and Jenny to move out as soon as they can. She is enabling his bad behavior and showing zero respect for you. Whatever you do, don't marry this woman unless you want to deal with George for the rest of your life. Your, your girlfriend doesn't respect you. She has zero respect for you and enables his bad behavior. What's his bad behavior again? Physically exercising. No, NL, that's not right. That's not right. The disrespect is that she didn't do exactly what you said, which, as we all know, is the basis for a healthy relationship. All healthy relationships are essentially just sequences of demand comply, demand comply. Do this, I did it. Do this, I did it. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody ever exercises their own autonomy at all, especially not teenagers. But hey, hey but NL, have you considered it's his house? Have you considered it's his house, his rules? 1.4 thousand likes. Take her key away and kick them out. Jesus, no amount of sex is worth this hassle. This is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It has 1.4 thousand likes. Are you actually like 15 years old? What a hassle. You know what? Very good point. What hassle. Oh, uh, I had to make fun of my 14-year-old stepson after he almost died doing an irresponsible bench press because I refused to teach him gym safety. It's such a hassle, man. After like a long day of work to have to spend time with my family, no amount of sex is worth the hassle. Friend of mine used to say, they must be a tornado between the sheets when we heard this sort of story. Let me guess. Your friend eventually grew up and was not 21 years old anymore, but you somehow have just stayed locked into this mindset for the rest of your life. What the hell are you talking about? Over and under a minute and only leaving destruction behind? Is this the immortal bard, William Shakespeare? To quote a very old joke, it starts with a lot of sucking and blowing and ends with you losing your house. Oh, dude, truer things have never been said. Holy cow. Dude, women are getting lit up in the comments section. Holy cow. Jeez, Jenny, dude, do not let Jenny see this. She would be like, ah! She'd be like, ah! Oh, man. Holy cow. She would be like Monka Giga featuring Robert Downey Jr. Okay, this is, I would say this is reasonably fair. I'm sorry, I put a lock on the door which George broke down with a hammer in a home they only live in because they couldn't afford to live alone with a hammer. Okay, that is pretty, that is pretty funny. Assuming this is real. I have to put that in there because it probably isn't. Oh, man. I just don't get it, man. It, every post is like not the asshole. Do I just live in a different world where like I, ex I express my desires to other people and don't expect them to just blindly comply with whatever I want at all times? I accept that when I express a desire, I'm expressing it to another autonomous person who may have a conflicting desire or just a different priority order of things that they want to do like in their own lives. 
Everybody else appears to be like, well, what I say is the law. How's that working out for you? You got 5,000 upvotes on Reddit, so maybe you're not complaining, but... This is this is Reddit craziness. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of losing it a little bit. Now the little shit deserved it. I mean, okay, he did break the lock with a hammer. That's a little shitty, but like I'm just I'm it's so crazy to me that you could see your stepson wriggling under a bench press. And he's literally 14 years old. Like he's in the ninth grade. And you watch it with like schadenfreude. You're like, ah. Don't worry though. He instantly analyzed the amount of weight on the bar. And also he knows like the strength of a, of a ninth grader's sternum. He's like, I have at least 52 seconds before this becomes a serious deal. He did an ocular pat down. Not the asshole. Are you sure you want the liability of these two in your home? Honestly, not much right now. Jenny has been good to me generally. But she's a terrible mother for George. Plus, as you say, a gigantic financial risk for me. Holy cow. This is the funniest thing I've ever read. You just called your girlfriend a terrible mother and a gigantic financial risk. I mean, he's not saying, like, the gym is going to break and then he's going to owe $7,000 to rebuild it. He's saying, like, if the stepson dies in the gym, then he's going to get sued. But, like, that's why you should show him how to work out safely, man. You're the one who let him wriggle under the bar, you dickhead! What are you talking about? If he got hurt... He could, Jenny could take me to the cleaners. By the way, am I the asshole for letting him think that he was going to have his thoracic cavity fucking cave in for 30 seconds just to teach him a lesson? He's so, like, like self-pitying. She generally just is this way with anything with regards to George. I wonder why. Maybe because it's her son and he what? He's, cause he, he shouldn't have broken the lock, but he broke the lock to work out, man. It's not, he's not, he didn't steal your car and go on a joyride. He's just, he's doing a bench press. I thought it was something she may get better with. But I'm gradually losing hope as time goes on. That must be hard for you uh, to balance that along with your uh, alter ego living as the Punisher. That's a lot to put on one man's plate. I got a lot of sympathy for that. Anyway, I think that's, I'm like, I'm upset with this post, but I'm also feeling powerful as a result of how upset I am. So it, fe it feels good, to be honest. How about it? Oh my, oh, dude, I can't even. So sorry to be millennial there with my, I can't even, but I, I can't even resist. I added another word. I can't even resist this one. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my babysitter? It's the intersection of all of my current interests. Being mad at people and r slash shit mom groups say. Okay. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my babysitter? I 32F and my husband 30 male. I'm inclined to think she's not the asshole because this is the rare Reddit post where the wife is older than the husband. She's girl bossing. Honest, I'm happy for her. I'm proud of her. I think she's doing great work. Keep it up. I don't even need to read the rest. Just kidding. Um, we plan to go on a date to see a movie at a theater near us. Since the movie was two hours long and it's 30 minutes to go there and 30 minutes to go back, the movie was starting at six and the kids go to bed at seven or eight. We hired a babysitter for three hours. Totally reasonable. I understand. I posted an ad on a Facebook group for babysitters and a girl who I'll just call, call B messaged me saying she would take the job. I have two kids, Caleb and Todd. Six male and four male. Hopefully not six months and four months. Otherwise, like, geez, who the heck is her, uh, her obstetrician? She's a damn miracle worker. I agreed to pay the amount she requested, which, which was about $25 per hour per kid. Okay, I mean, that's... I would, honestly, that seems like a competitive wage to me. 
So that's 150 bucks for three hours of babysitting. See, that seems, if, if, if I may say so, that seems more than reasonable. Maybe not much more, but, but, but reasonable for sure. When B got there, I gave her a list of things I wanted her to do, which included keep them entertained. I'm fine with them just watching TV for a bit, but not over 30 minutes. Can I tell you something? This is, this is a nice to have, not a need to have. I know how this sounds, but I don't think you should hire a babysitter and expect them to be a parent. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. When you're, when you're at the movies... You don't know what's going on in your house. I think the, the only reasonable expectation I think you can have of a babysitter is that they're going to supervise your children and keep them safe. And they're going to eat maybe if they haven't eaten yet. And they're going to go to bed. At, they're going to try to go to bed at the, at the right time. The idea that you could, you're basically trying to get someone that you found on Facebook to also uphold all of your like parenting standards for that three hour period seems a little unreasonable to me but maybe other people would disagree feed the kids okay we have a play set outside and toys in their room great news sandwiches are fine they can have something sweet after dinner before they brush their teeth make sure they brush their teeth put them to bed make sure you give them a bit of time after they eat to use the bathroom get caleb to bed around eight and todd to bed around seven this kid's going to bed at 7 p.m my baby goes to bed at like 8.30. This is, I mean, I would love it if she went to bed at 7, but holy cow. I'm, it's, I'm not mad. I'm actually jealous. Kids going to bed at 7? Holy cow, man. My six-year-old goes to bed at 7.30? Does that invert like at some point? Well, I guess it's a flip side, right? Because right now my daughter wakes up at like 8 a.m. But when she starts going to bed at like 7, she's going to wake up at 5. Once the naps go away, it starts to invert. Okay, that's honest. I don't know if I'm looking forward to I guess it's just life. Anyway, that's fine. And so my husband and I left and drove off. When, when returning, I walked into the house and my boys were playing on the couch. Kids should have been asleep for at least an hour or two by now. This already made me a bit angry. Hey, I got, we got to hear why they're, not to, why they're not in bed, okay? This already made me a bit angry since I had put the times on the list of things I needed from B. The kids had food stains all over their mouth and hands, and there were candy wrappers and paper plates on the floor and the couch. They also had half their toys on the floor, and B wasn't watching them. I asked my husband to put the kids to bed, and I'd find and talk to B. I went into my kitchen. She had her phone in her hand and was sitting at my dining table. When she noticed me, she looked up and asked if I needed a minute to go get her money. Sorry, one second. I'm, I'm getting lost in the paragraph here. Or if I already had it on me. I told her she would not be getting paid as she did not do any work and did not take care of my children. She yelled at me that we agreed on me paying her and that she tried to take care of my kids, but they weren't listening. I yelled at her to get out of my house and she left without getting paid. My kids aren't perfectly behaved and I can definitely imagine them giving B a hard time. I also feel bad now that I've gotten some talking tos from other moms and I don't think that any of the babysitters will accept my sitting requests now. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Okay. I would straight up hit you with an everybody sucks here. And I would also hit you with maybe a suggestion that this is why you don't hire a stranger from Facebook to babysit your children. The correct course of outcome, or the correct course of action, I should say, is that you had a nice date night, you pay her the 150 bucks, and then you never hire her again. And you tell everybody you know that she was not a good babysitter. You, you undermine her business in a sinister fashion from the outside. Rather than just hit her with like one data point that's going to cause her a little bit of pain, you dig out the foundation of her, her business from the outside. That's taking the high road. Okay, write that down. At the end of the day, I mean, I've, you got three hours of babysitting. The babysitting just fucking sucked. Like, it, it sounds like she's a, a really bad babysitter. You pay the 150 bucks. I mean, like, you're not, I, without being unreasonable, you're not God 
This isn't like a home renovation. This isn't like a, a, a lawyer. What are you going to, you're really going to be like, oh, well, actually the correct course of action was to dock her pay by 50 bucks. What do you, like, just pay her what you said you were going to pay her and then never pay her, never hire her again. You're really going to waste your time being like, well, you only gave me $75 worth of babysitting? I, I, to me, that doesn't make any sense. I definitely still feel like she's the asshole. I, 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 like, she's the asshole, but also the babysitter is really bad. She's not a good babysitter. I do legal work and I charge less per hour than the babysitter. You do legal work and you charge less than $25 per hour? $50. Well, that's two kids. You charge $25 per hour per client? Per, per uh, signee on the class action lawsuit? I'm just, sorry, I'm just, you've, you've said the statement that now has me asking more questions, you know? I'm just scared. Like, I don't know. Like, not to be rude, but I think if I had a lawyer and he was like, I worked on this file for four hours, you owe me a hundred bucks, I would be like, I think I'm going to seek new representation. How can you keep the lights on? That's like half a work day, man. You, we were in a, you have an office in a big glass building. It's just, I don't, it just doesn't seem like this is sustainable. Anyway, um, I mean, I don't know how much more there is to mine here. I definitely think they're like both assholes. I mean, it's, I, I think it's like an open and dry case. For me, you pay the price that you, you quoted them and then you're unhappy with the service and you never use them again. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to use our last name on her doctorate? I mean, look, the edit, so many of the edits, people are like, read the edit, read the edit. The edit like never changes anything. They, they, it's the OP getting stun locked because people are like, I don't know if you're the asshole, but $150 for babysitting is too much. And then they go, I know I quoted them a high rate, but in my area, there's a high cost of living and blah, blah, blah. Like it's stuff that, that makes no difference whatsoever to the original post most of the time. Am I the asshole for throwing my McDonald's bag back inside the drive through window? Post has been deleted. <laughs> Am I the asshole for throwing my phone, my wife's phone out the window because she wouldn't stop texting her friend when we're at the cottage? Oh, man. This shit always gets me, man. <laughs> Oh, come on. And then I'm not even going to put it up on the screen because it's like, at first you're like, you should never throw your wife's phone. And then here we go. She couldn't stop messaging her writing friend. All they talk about are characters and role playing them with each other. My wife is looking for a serious career in writing, but this is literally just for fun. She's never going to publish this dark academia borderline fan fiction. Okay, fucking stop making stuff up, asshole. Get like a real hobby. It's madness. Am I the asshole for expecting... This one seems real, even though it has a throwaway account name with four numbers at the end of it. Am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to help fix the house we live in? I don't think it's real. I'm looking at it and I'm saying I don't think it's real. I'm sorry to tell I'm I'm I, I, I don't know if this is the end of React Court or what, but so many of these posts are just they're just bait, man. Yeah, I'm I'm protecting you from the bait by not putting it up on the screen because I don't want you to waste your good judgment juice on on fake posts. And so many of these are, are fake posts. How about this one? This seems... The, the more mundane 
the happier I am because I think it's more likely to be realistic. Like so many of the fake posts are like, me, 75, male, and my girlfriend, 19F, female, who is blind, um, were in an ambulance on the way to the moon, um, whereas this one is, it, I mean, this seems pedestrian, and I, I'm more likely to believe it as a result. Maybe I have a bias towards that. Am I the asshole for leaving the house while my girlfriend is still sleeping? Let's find out. So I made plans for us to get up, go to work at a, Go, get up, go work at a coffee shop. Not as a barista, but on your laptop, okay? Then meet my family for lunch, then go to the market. Very nice day. Honestly, sounds like a very nice day. So, it, that sounds delightful. My girlfriend likes to sleep in, and I get up super early, 5.30 to 6 a.m. I told her I wanted to leave early, like 7 a.m., because I had a ton of work to do before seeing my family. This is tough because everybody's got their own standards. But leaving the house at 7 a.m. when you're not go Like, I get that he's getting work done, but you're not going to, like, a shift that starts at 8. That's too early, in my opinion. If she doesn't have to be there, like, leaving the house at 7 a.m. Bro, I'm at work at 7 yeah, but she, it's, she's not working. Like, at, she doesn't have to be there. You know what? I, I'm not saying seven is, like, too early to open your eyes and be awake. I'm just saying, like, you know, you're starting a day. He planned for a very nice day. She has to be up at 6.15 so she can take a shower, so she can dry her hair to leave the house at 7 a.m.? Why does it, I mean, if he's got to get some work done, why doesn't he just get some work done from 7 to 9 in his apartment? And then when she wakes up and she's ready to go, they could go to the coffee shop and do some more. I mean, it's just, these are very normal hours. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm out of the house at like 7.30 sometimes. There's fucking nobody on the sidewalk, and I live in a big city. At 4 p.m., it's rush hour. You're, you're getting electric scooters are crashing into you. Uber Eats cyclists with like big backpacks full of soups that are half spilled are, are jostling right next to you. Not that many people are leaving the house at 7 a.m. for a day of leisure. If they are, they're going to the damn mountain or something like that. They're not going to Starbucks. But anyway, she expressed how exhausted and tired she was yesterday. So this morning when I woke up at 6, considering we went to bed at 11.30 p.m., I didn't wake her up and let her sleep. I got ready to leave and went to give her a kiss goodbye while telling her, take all the time you need. Meet me at the coffee shop. I don't want to rush you. I know you're tired. She all of a sudden said, go gets all cold with me saying, OMG, why didn't you wake me up? I thought we were going to go together. Daryl. She said, we're leaving at 6.15. Tell me my ass isn't sitting in the car until 6.45. I come inside. She's stepping out the damn shower like, can I help you? I look this woman in her optic stems. And I said, honestly, this is, this is relatable. I don't think I've ever had a situation like this, to be honest. I think I would just be chilling in the... I'd be getting my work done in the living room. You got Wi-Fi. Like, I don't understand. I expressed I wanted to let her sleep because I know how tired she was and she can just meet me later. Later being an hour later so she can get ready while I get a head start on my work. Are, like, are you the barista? I... <laughs> then you gotta go. I understand. I, I just... I don't know. I just don't understand why you gotta be at the coffee shop to start your work. It just seems like you could do like a split shift and do half of it in the living room and half of it at the Starbucks. I finally leave the house. She texts me basically saying she doesn't understand why I was able to wake her up to say goodbye, but not able to wake her up when I woke up. She later texts me arguing, saying that it isn't fair that we made plans and I'm going off on my own without her. All I wanted to do was make her sleep in more because I know how tired she was. She starts with the name calling, etc. What? 
And I told her, instead of arguing with me since you're already up, get ready and come. The coffee place is 10 minutes from our house. She says she doesn't want to drive there and pay for parking and pay for gas. Relatable in the, in, with the current prices, for sure. I don't know if she expected me to drive back and pick her up. I really think she's being a baby. I would, to be honest with you, I would agree with that. As much as I think that this dude's a little, he's a little too early pilled for my standards, I do think she's being a little bit of a baby about it. Unreliable narrator. Yeah, it's kind of like, this is like the 2022's House of Leaves. My, I think she's being a baby. My solution would be get in your car, drive over. It's not that difficult. I apologize for not waking her up, but I genuinely just wanted her to sleep. She finally basically cancels all our daily plans and says, have a nice day. Whew. I'm sitting in the coffee shop alone now. It's been two hours. She isn't coming. So am I the asshole for leaving while she's sleeping? No, she's the asshole. Even though I kind of, sorry, I need to scroll down a little bit. Sorry, sorry. Um, she's the asshole for sure. I don't think this is everybody sucks at all. At, at some point, I mean, I, I guess I can't say in every relationship, but have I had situations where my wife said, hey, I want to get up early tomorrow. Wake me up when you get up at 630. And then she comes to bed at like 12. And I'm like, well, this is a, this is a damn poison pill, man. You want, you want me to be the first thing you see when you, when you open your eyes after not getting a good night's sleep? Uh, it seems like I'm kind of accepting a, a suicide pass on that one. The alternative is that, and, and I, Kate would say the same thing. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens now and then. You know, you, you get up and you're faced with a decision. Am I going to wake up my wife because she told me to wake her up and risk that she's going to be... Um, annoyed with me because she's not going to feel like she had a good night's sleep or am I going to let her sleep a little bit? Not because I'm protecting her feelings, but because I know that uh, how important a good night's sleep is to her. E everybody's going to find themselves in that position from time to time. And can I be honest with you? I've done both. There's been times where I was like, you know, she needs to do something in the AM and then you just take the, you take the bullet. You wake her up at 630 and say, you told me to do this. <laughs> and then there's some times where she's like, I would like to get up earlier tomorrow. Can you wake me up? And then I leave, like I, I get up from my side of the bed and she looks like she's deep in REM sleep. And I'm like, I'm not going to wake her up. Are you insane? You got you to gotta be out of your mind if you think I'm going to... Like, if someone looks like they're dead while they're sleeping, I'm like... If they're, like, rolling around and, like, you know, th then you can shake them a little bit. But if they look like they're dead, I'm not going to wake you up unless it's urgent. Any, I don't even think we need to look at the comments. You're not the asshole. Obviously, your girlfriend is a little insane. It is funny that you had so much work to do in the damn coffee shop. And yet you're spending all this time typing up the damn Reddit posts. No wonder you got to get to the coffee shop. You got two hours of work. You're stretching it out to six hours. I mean, I'm not saying he shouldn't have woken her up. I guess all I'm saying is like, she should understand that she didn't get woken up because he wanted her to sleep more. You know, there's not that, there's no reason to blow up a, 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 a parenthetical, very nice day. Over, over a judgment call like that. Okay, let me, let me guess. Am I the asshole for being upset that my sister made me a birthday cake? My sister has a purple heart. She was shot in the Peace Corps trying to deliver medicine in Mali in 2009. Let, just give me a second here. Let me, let me find it. Let, let, let me find the part where, like, you go in on somebody for being an asshole and then there's actually, like, a condition that means they have to be an asshole and you can't judge them. I'm not reading this. This is, this is teenage drama. This, this post boils down to 
My sister made me a birthday cake, but the cursive writing on the cake looked really bad. Okay. God, I miss being 17. <laughs> this shit would ruin your night. The cursive on my cake? Like the lady on, uh, on Kitchen Nightmares on that one episode where they ran out of buns, so they have to serve her a burger on sourdough bread. And she's like, I just have never been in a restaurant where they ran out of buns before. Like, it's just really, it's just really hard. Oh, man. I think we got one more in us. Oh. Am I the asshole for not making my son's friend breakfast? I just, it's so, <laughs> to, oh, okay, so this is it. Here you go. It's, I was going to be like, you just chose not to. Then they, they, at the end of it, I'm a single mom and groceries are expensive. Okay, fine. You, you got me. No, you're not an asshole. Fair enough. Also, Sweden detected. This post is brought to you by Sweden. Am I the asshole for not telling my boyfriend how... I, dude, I, I... It's only because I respect the EU's right to be forgotten laws for internet privacy that I don't go in the, the internet archive and go to this... Am I the asshole for the strict schedule I have my kids on? Post has been deleted. Oh, that shit would have been so good! I could have chewed on that bone for like 20 minutes, man. You deleted it. Come on. Okay. Am I the asshole for not telling my boyfriend how much money I make? That's how we know it was real. That's true. <laughs> the, that, we, need to find, we need to go to r slash am I the asshole deleted because no throwaway would ever delete something. They'd be like, look at how mad people are. I'm an amazing creative writer. It's only when people start to get blowback on a real story that they're like, I got to remove, I got to get this shit out of here immediately. Okay. Am I the asshole for not telling my boyfriend how much money I make? I'm baffled by this situation. I'm 24. I finished college last year and have been working since then in my current job. I do not make a huge amount of money, but I make enough to take care of myself and afford some nice things. My boyfriend is 29. He works in tech and he makes a lot more than me. I've never asked him. He volunteered this info many times. He does work in tech. He told me that, by the way, amazing sentence. This is actually a great writer. Because what she could have said to, to get people, to, in her head she would have been like, this would get more people on my side. She could have said, my boyfriend always volunteers how much he makes and it makes me feel belittled. But she didn't have to write that. She just wrote what happened and then is letting normal people interpret that. And I'm like, I already have a preconceived notion about her boyfriend as a result. That's great writing. That's showing, not telling. I don't need to know how you feel. You said how you feel just by saying what happened. He told me he was planning to propose soon, but he actually can't do it without knowing his stance on some important things about me. Not unreasonable. Those important things are my financial situation. You, you should not get married without knowing that. That seems fair to me. That doesn't seem like an unreasonable thing if you're going to, you know, if you're going to marry somebody. How my family would react to his proposal because we come from different cultures. Okay. Whether we would move in together after we're engaged. Again, it's a culture thing. Okay. I told him my financial situation. I don't have any debt and I'm in the process of saving up and building an emergency fund before I can think of what I'll do with my money. Now again, now, now you've done the same thing you did in the first paragraph, but you've done it in a different way. It's the, it's the, and they're not married, but it's the my money part of that that just to me is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, at least in my own brain right now. You're talking about getting married. It is your money, but also if you get married, it's kind of your money. It, I guess everybody's got a different arrangement for that sort of stuff. But anyway, 
he needs to know how much I make exactly. I don't want to tell him, but I give him a range. Still not enough. He's so mad about it. He says finances are important for a couple and he needs to know I'm financially responsible. But if he needs a specific amount to know that, I say he doesn't actually know me and maybe he should use his critical thinking skills and look at all the time we spent together and conclude whether I'm actually responsible with my money or not. He accused me of not trusting him and hiding things. And he told me he can't be around me right now and left. Actual sanest uh, fiance or boyfriend in, uh, in Reddit history. Rare, sane man on Reddit in a post. I'm actually baffled that it's creating such a fight. Am I wrong? I don't want to share that. But uh, listen... You don't have to share your salary, but you kind of have to share it with your... Sp if you want to get married to somebody. You don't have to, like, tell somebody on the bus the exact dollar amount that you make annually, but, like, I think you kind of... It's a reasonable standard to, to tell your spouse. I also don't understand why you would give a range... But then be like, I'm not gonna give you the exact number. Also, like, so when you gave him a range, your actual salary was just the exact midpoint, right? Like nobody in the middle of an argument is gonna be like, I'm gonna give a range and I'm gonna be near the bottom end, right? Like nobody, they're, they're just gonna be like, okay, I make 65,000 a year. I make between 60 and 70. So like just the first thing I would say is read between the lines. I just don't understand, though, why you would be like, here's a range. Well, I don't know, was the range like a million dollar range? Like, I make between one and a million dollars? Otherwise, like, why would you be so concerned about the specific number? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, if, I, I would assume, depending on her salary, that a reasonable range might be like ten to 20000 You couldn't just bite the bullet and be like... It's in the middle of those, that number that I gave you. One to ten more billion. I mean, if she's making a more billion dollars a year, be careful because she works for Sony Pictures. I don't necessarily think she's hiding something. I just think she's being kind of a weirdo, <laughs> to be honest. It just seems like a weird thing to be like, I refuse to give you an exact number Instead, I'm going to give you an estimate and then draw a line in the sand and be like, that's too much. All, no debt is, is great. Don't get me wrong. Maybe, I, look, I've got too many plus twos. Let's farm some minus twos. I don't like the way the husband said, tell me about your financial situation. And part of her reply is, I'm still considering what to do with my money. I feel like if a, if a potential wife asked her husband that question and the husband said, I'm still figuring out what to do with my money, people would be like, well, if we get married, we'll talk about what to do with that money. I wouldn't even say our money. I would just say we'll talk about... Because like, I know they're not engaged yet, but like two people that are like in a relationship together, not married, maybe she's saving up some money to buy a jet ski. But if they're going to get married, you might want to start talking about, hey, that jet ski fund that you're working on, you know, if depending on how we're going to do the marriage, you know, they need a deposit for the wedding planner and the venue and blah, maybe we're going to work on getting a down payment or something like that. And so like you might have to be like, you know, put the jet ski off to the side. Although he is also very boastful about his salary, so maybe he's, that's going to come back to bite him in the ass. Maybe he's going to pay for a jet ski and the wedding and the down payment, but <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. Not everybody's the same with their, their married financials, for sure. Like, some people are like, everything's in a pool, and then some people are like, we have separate finances, but like a shared household account that we both put uh, money into in order to cover shared living expenses and stuff like that. Not everybody's on the same page. 
But I do think it's reasonable to know your spouse's salary. That's, I mean, I get that they're not married yet. But I could also understand, like, I don't think the guy overreacted. I think he asked for what should be open information between a married couple. And she said, I refuse to give it to you. And he's like, okay, weirdos, see you in like two days. That seems totally normal to me. I don't know. I don't, I may, I don't see a lot of disagreement, but <laughs> hold on. I, I do want to. I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's go find the first not the asshole comment. It's probably the top comment. IMO, if you're not willing to share that information with him, I suspect you have other concerns. Okay. Sane Redditor spotted, in my opinion. Everybody sucks here. Okay, but like, how does the boyfriend suck? Is just, that's my only question. She sucks. I'm not debating that. I have, okay, just one second. BF has told OP he won't propose unless she discloses income. OP has decided she won't disclose income until after he proposes. Chicken or the egg? Just because two people have a condition like this does not mean it's an unsolvable chicken or the egg. That's not how chicken and the egg works. Chicken and the egg is like, we don't know what came first because one came from the other. This is somebody trying to create a chicken and the egg situation when actually one person has a reasonable request and then the other person is like, I will not fulfill your reasonable request. It's like, you know, it, what if he was like, hey, do you have a criminal record? And she was like, well, I'm not going to tell you that until you propose. That's not a chicken and the egg situation. You're about to marry a felon. It's not a catch-22. It's just one person having an, one person creating deadlock for no reason. Yo, A.A. Ron, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. She's, yeah, she's holding information ransom. I'll give you a range of felonies I've committed. Oh, my God. Hi, I know you're getting some rough comments in this thread, so I wanted to shed some perspective. I've been in your shoes, coming from a different cultural background with certain subjects only come to light post-engagement or post-marriage. I am a 1.5 gen immigrant in a relationship with a much less conservative partner. You are currently 24 and still learning your own footing in the world with your career, your salary, and your role in this relationship. You have likely your whole life considered and set milestones of, well, okay, without being rude, blah, blah, blah. I believe this is a soft, you're the asshole. Not because of what people are saying, but because you are saying that you are comfortable being in a relationship with someone with these guards up. I don't believe you are ready to be serious enough for an engagement, and that is fine. But it's, there's no, like, you gotta, I, I don't think this is right. I think she just needs to disclose the information. So now you're taking it a step further that's like, oh, because she's unwilling to disclose this information she's too like she's not emotionally prepared for marriage people are insane everybody's insane in their own way if you waited until everything in your life was like exactly lined up to hit major milestones you would never go anywhere it's just too, you know you've gone too far you've gone too far in the other direction of like you're not mature enough to get married right now good luck in your journey what the heck? What are you, good luck at your journey. It's just an argument, man. I don't understand. Good luck in your journey. Your journey to text your husband your salary. You better pack a granola bar. If you're not ready to share, then you aren't ready to get married and your boyfriend needs to move on. If you're not ready to get married right away, you guys should just break up. You're 24. You're the asshole. With engagement in the cards, I'll assume you guys are in a long-term relationship, so he deserves to know. Yeah, I mean, okay, reasonable, very reasonable. Finances are a key to... Okay, these are too reasonable. These are too reasonable. Too reasonable. Where's my, where's my insane Redditors at? 
Where's, where's all the Redditors that were posting in the, the $7,000 home gym where a guy almost watched his stepson die? That were like, he disrespected you. You should throw her shit on the sidewalk outside and change the locks. You're the asshole. Why are you dying on this hill? Why are you unwilling to share the exact amount? Why not tell him? Forgot to tell you you're the asshole. You're the asshole, LOL. Holy cow. She's getting lit up, man. You're the asshole. I don't know if you're a troll or not because you keep arguing and repeating yourself. You're the asshole, not ready to get married. Soft, you're the asshole. You're the, oh my God. Holy cow. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. Yo, I'm not starting to feel bad for this lady, man. She's getting damn rolled. This is crazy. There's not a, like a single dissenting opinion here. Oh my God. I'm scrolling. I'm down in the freaking 49 upvotes. Anyway, well, that was fun. <laughs> They're beating their ass in the quote retweets. You're not wrong. I'm going to slash.